This video is an introduction to Twitter, your professional learning network. It's not designed for somebody who's an experienced Twitter user. Rather, this is for somebody who would be brand new to Twitter. I'm going to go through the basics, what Twitter is used for, why we'd use it in education, what a tweet is, what a hashtag is, what all the fuss is about. Really, hopefully by the end of this video, you're going to feel confident to engage Twitter and develop your own personal learning network and your own professional development. So what is Twitter? Twitter is a messaging service limited to 140 characters. It's about as long as a headline. It's easy to write, easy to read. If you are writing tweets, you really have to think about what it is you're saying. It's public. You are throwing it out there. Here's what I have to say. It's opt-in, which means that you choose to follow somebody. When you opt in to somebody's feed, their tweets will show up in your home feed. If you're a Twitter user and you are actively tweeting, you're going to hopefully have people follow your tweets, which means you need, to be, you need to be interesting. It is a powerful platform. It is device agnostic. It'll work on Mac, Windows, Android, and iPhones. So what is Twitter good for? Twitter is good for, for the news, for shared experiences. It's the world's real-time newspaper. So real-time tweets will tell you what's going on in the news. It's a wonderful place for sharing common experiences during a conference. You can tweet what you learn from specific sessions, and if you happen to miss a session, you could look at the, the tweets and follow links and, and really experience conferences even if you're not sitting in the room. Great for commentary, what people care about, what they have expertise in, wonderful business conversations. It's a key business channel for companies to engage directly with their customers, partners, and other constituents. There's this ambient intimacy where you could kind of have a lightweight connection and know what people are doing without having to respond. And it's a wonderful mind reading tool. You can see what individuals are thinking about and what specific groups are focusing on. It's been really called a game changer for educators. This is where your professional learning network comes in. A lot of educators are teaching, they're working very hard, and they're kind of in silos. It's a very lonely profession. It's hard to look outside of your own classroom and see, you know, what are people doing? I don't really I get this a lot. I don't have time for that. I'm I'm too busy. What Twitter does is you can on your own own time access people who are creative and thoughtful. You could use what they're saying. You could follow the links that they provide. And it's really a way to develop yourself as a teacher on your own time. The trouble with Twitter is it's kind of like trying to drink from a fire hose. Overall, Twitter, I mean, there's millions of tweets a second. So on your feed, if you follow a number of people, you're going to have a lot of tweets showing up. How do you deal with that? It's very overwhelming, especially for new users. So what Twitter does they have something called hashtags, which helps you organize as tweets. The first thing you really need to know, nobody expects you to read every single tweet in your feed. It's just impossible. And once you kind of embrace that concept, Twitter gets a lot easier to deal with. So what are hashtags? Hashtags are this little number symbol followed by some words. And what that does is it categorizes tweets within Twitter. You could reduce this fire hose to a trickle, make the unmanageable manageable. There are a lot of education hashtags out there that you can follow. And if you follow them, what's going to show up, for example, if you do hashtag SS chat, social studies chat, all tweets that have to do with that subject are going to show up. So it, it gets rid of all extraneous tweets and it makes you're searching much more focused. Now, let's take a look at what, a, what is a tweet. And I'm going to go through kind of the anatomy of a tweet here in, in a few slides. First thing you see is this tweet. This is a tweet I tweeted out during the NCCE conference. The first thing you'll see is my Twitter handle. So it gives me my name and then at Matt Rosenberg 3. I put my name in there because I'm using this for professional development. I want people to be able to find out who I am. So I'll, there's my Twitter handle, at Matt Rosenberg3. The at symbol in Twitter refers to a specific person. You could use that to, to message somebody, to follow them. A lot of presenters and conferences now will give you their Twitter handle in an introductory slide. If you like what they had to say, 
go ahead and follow them. The next part of a tweet is the actual body of the tweet. You only have 140 characters. This is where the magic happens. You have to fit your post within that 140 characters. So grammar kind of goes out the window. And for English teachers out there, you just kind of have to get over it. If you see here, I have three instead of spelling out three. I'm not going to use proper English or grammar because I'm trying to fit in what I need to say to let people know here, here's what I got going on. So I have a great post with slide decks attached, three presentations about Google and Ed. There's my tweet. I put a couple little uh, uh, things in here. I put a hashtag and I put an at symbol to let people know what's going on. So the hashtag is NCCE2014. That was the Twitter hashtag for the conference I attended. So this tweet will show up in that feed for anybody looking at NCCE2014. I also put at Tech Savvy Teach. That was the gentleman who's a uh, really talented teacher uh, and education technologist. That's his blog. So I wanted to show him, hey, listen, I liked your blog post and I tweeted about it. So this, if I put at Tech Savvy Teach, my tweet will show up in his feed and it'll also show up in anybody who's following him's feed. Lastly, I put a link to the blog post here. This is, you'll see links are very helpful for educators looking for resources. This is really where the magic happens for your professional learning network. People will put their tweet out, they'll have hashtags, but the key thing is a lot of these educators will have links to blog posts, to websites, to web 2.0 tools, to videos. That's where it's extremely helpful for you. So you could take a look at it and go, boom, that sounds good to me. I wanted to know about that. Click the link, learn, and develop. A lot of people will, will use a URL shortener, such as tinyurl or bit.ly, or Google has one, and those, tiny, those URL shorteners will help fit those links within the 140 character limit. Now, I, I certainly encourage you to join Twitter. It's free. I, I think if you are interested in this, you should just go ahead and join. When you join, Think about your handle, which is your username. Your username, your handle counts against 140 characters if anybody wants to directly message you. So don't put down at the most wonderful teacher in the world. You just used up a quarter of somebody's tweet. So keep it as short as possible. People sometimes want to say something about themselves, like at Tech Savvy Teacher, or they're going to put a play on their name at Mike Gusto. Uh, you got at Cool Cat Teacher or at NM NMHS Principal. These are all four uh, educators I encourage you to follow. They're, they're very, very good, and you can take a look at their Twitter handle. So think about your Twitter handle. The first thing you want to do after you join is to go ahead and follow people. I encourage you to follow people from your school, anybody you happen to know, any conferences you attended. Just a great place to start. I'd start with these four people here. You also want to make sure you fill out your bio. Twitter users are reluctant to follow other users who haven't bothered to fill out their own bios. For God's sakes, please do not leave the standard avatar up or have a blank bio. That is a red flag that you are a newbie and nobody is going to want to have anything to do with you on Twitter. Uh, so put a picture of yourself or put a picture of something that represents you. You don't have to have a picture of you. Also, take you have 160 characters to fill out your bio to let us know who you are, what you're all about, what you're interested in, and this is what how you get people to follow you. So I put up here, technology integration specialist. I'm passionate about developing 21st century learners and teachers. I'm from Portland, Oregon. Boom. People see that. They go, hey, that guy is interested in what I'm interested in. I'll follow him. It works very well, and you really need to do that right away. Now, a couple of Twitter terms. There's a lot of jargon in Twitter. Here are some terms that show up all the time. To favorite a tweet. What does that mean? Well, Twitter, again, it's a little overwhelming. You're going to get a lot of tweets coming at you, especially if you start following a number of people. So if you see a tweet that you like, but you don't really have an opportunity to explore it, you could simply favorite that tweet. And what that'll do is it allows you to come back to it later on, kind of like a save. Similar to like in Facebook, but it allows you to come back to that tweet. If you don't come back to it, it's likely going to be gone forever because it's going to get lost in this kind of ocean of tweets that are out there. So favorite it if you like it. Retweet allows you, is a powerful tool. You're going to share someone else's tweet with your followers. 
beware. Don't retweet too often. It's actually better practice to modify the tweet and then go ahead and give credit to the to the person who was the author instead of simply retweeting. But again, retweeting is nothing really wrong with it. I just encourage don't retweet like crazy. An MT is a modified tweet. It, it allows you to modify an existing tweet, and that's really the better way to go. Take what you liked about somebody's tweet, change it, explain it, give them credit. So at Matt Rosenberg 3, if you modify one of my tweets, and away you go. You go MT, at Matt Rosenberg 3, and then away you go. And that just shows people that uh, you're really thinking about it. Now, again, Twitter's sometimes hard to wrap your head around. A lot of people, when they first look at it, they just don't get it. So I encourage you to just kind of learn by watching. If you don't even want to join, you can go to Tweet Chat. Tweet Chat is a, is a website that allows you to monitor hashtags without actually being on Twitter. So you can go to Tweet Chat and type in the hashtag, uh, hashtag Ed Chat or hashtag Ed Tech Chat or hashtag SS Chat. And then all the tweets for that hashtag will show up. And it just allows you to monitor. Can't take part in it, but sometimes it's a great place to start. There are global education chats out there. Again, if you simply go to Google and type in education chats or education hashtags, you're going to get list after list. Some of these chats are specific time and place. For example, there might be Sundays at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you go on to that at that time period, you'll see an active conversation going on between education users uh, who are really asking themselves questions, talking about specific topics. This is where a lot of the magic happens. If you don't want to necessarily take part in that, you could simply, they call it lurking in the background. That's perfectly acceptable, but I encourage you to take part in the conversation. Tweet chat, again, is a great place to start. Twitter, again, obviously there is... Uh, free speech. But there's a couple things you want to do or not do uh, to really make your experience as professional as possible. Be, not, be helpful. Be nice. Don't be sarcastic or snarky. Don't be political and be positive. I encourage you to have a professional Twitter account and then a personal Twitter account. I am never political in my professional uh, account simply because I think it's unprofessional to be political as an education professional if you follow that. So I, I, you're really using Twitter as education to develop your per, uh, professional learning network or personal learning network. Politics doesn't have anything to do with that. So leave, leave that at the door. I think it's a big turnoff for people. I, uh, people in, in Twitter tend to be very positive place, very excited. And I think if you, if you lean towards that, you're going to be in great shape and you're really going to get a lot out of Twitter. Now, I hope you enjoyed uh, this short video. I'm going to, this is a haiku deck. I will give you a link to haiku deck right here on this blog. Tweet me at Matt Rosenberg three. Let me know how it's going and anything I could do to help you get, get involved with Twitter. Thank you.